just remember that right here, I could have been doing something with a lot of curses in it, and I wouldn't have run with online vibes to the last word. It would have been a whole bunch of motherfucking rocker rockers. But I ain't going to do that for the kids out there, so I changed. But, vibe online. So imagine it was a rap on the back of that. Vibe online. Cool. That's it. If God give me breath for 20 more years, I see myself changing the world. Because my thought patterns are so opposite of what's the norm. Really? So I would have to change the world or I have to be changed by the world. Um, how is it working with Suge and having the West Coast for you? And a lot of your East Coast fans feel like your new allegiance to the West Coast has felt, you know, a lot of them feel maybe you're not as loyal to the East Coast anymore. And that's so nonsense. Poppycock. Because <laughs> this is not a new allegiance to the West Coast. I've been on the West Coast all this time. It's just because some people, not all, right. some people on the East Coast be on their dick so hard that they never heard me say that I'm living on the West Coast. Right. It's just that by me keeping it real, I always said where I came from. I always gave New York their props. On Me Against the World, I took a whole song to give it up. So now on the next album, when I want to give it up from my home, where I'm at, Everybody got a problem? Why didn't we have no problem with Biggie saying Brooklyn in the house every fucking show he do? Why didn't I have a problem with Bronx and Boom? They just did a Sprite commercial off um, the bridge and KRS. But what, why is it not hip hop when I do it? Well, I mean, goddamn. Why is it suddenly a nigga tripping when I do it? Why everybody else could have a war, have beef within the music, talk about differences, and it's okay, it's music, it's hip hop, it's groundbreaking. When I do it, it's war. <laughs> And that's all I'm doing. All I'm doing is saying I'm tired of you talking about where you from. And, and if that's what we're going to do now, because we was doing it like hip-hop was one nation. And I have proof to say what, what I was doing. I did more for the East Coast than the East Coast did. I put more guns in East Coast niggas' hands than East Coast niggas did when they came out here. I put them niggas on the more weed gates and weed spots and safe havens and safe spots than the East Coast did. I put more rappers on than they did. I gave Biggie his first shows. I was the one that put, I was that bridge that niggas used to walk on to get over here. I explained it. I'm the one that told you. I'm why all these niggas run around with a gangbanger on their payroll now. Is there still a beef going on with you and Biggie? It was never a beef. It's only a difference in opinion. Right. To me, if I, like, my, my homeboy Sugar gave me the best advice I could ever give from anybody. He said, He's, when people ask him if he's beefing with um, Bad Boy, with Puffy, he says, like, me going to a playground and picking on a little kid. Right. That's like me being mad at my little brother because he getting cash now. I'm not mad at that. I'm just mad at my little brother when he don't respect me. Yeah. Now, when you don't respect me, I'm going to spank your ass. I don't give a fuck how rich you got on the block. I'm your big brother. I will break your big ass down. And that's my, that's only, that's my only point. And I feel as though he wronged me. You got out of hand and you're wrong, but you got seduced by the power. Not because it's an evil person, yeah. but because money is evil if it's not handled right. Mm -hmm. If you lose your composure, you can do anything. And he, he fear got stronger than love, and niggas did things that they know they weren't supposed to do. They know in their heart. That's why they in hell now. Right. They can't sleep. That's why they're telling all of the reporters and all the people, why they doing this? They fucking up hip-hop. Because they in hell. They can't make money, they can't go anywhere, they can't look at themselves, because they know the prodigal son has returned. I'm alive. The ghost is walking around. <laughs> you know what I mean? And I'm alive talking. In jail, I didn't talk. I made peace. Now, everybody that thinks that I disrespected or I love, I love my East Coast fans. I'm from there. I'm eating New York pizza. I drive New York jeeps. I want to hear New York. But I'm saying, let's keep it real for a second. If you have the love of music that you are, study. Go back and study. Study how party and bullshit was me before I met Biggie. You don't hear my style in this rap. Study how after I met Biggie, Ready to Die come out, his whole style changed. Study. Study why I would be mad. Study why I be, would be mad when half of New York, half of the major New York rappers, or they, or they managers, or they agents, or they somebody, was there when I got shot. And nobody could give me no information. Just study that. Study how when Wu Tang got their chain snatched at Six Six Deuce, I not only found who did it, right. but gave them the message that if they want to see the niggas that did it, they can see them. Man to man, just you and them. Right. No guns, no nothing. Right. 
If you feel like that, that's all I ask for. That's all I ask for. If you're going to act like you a gangster or a G or the king of New York, I'm going to expect that. And when you don't come through, then I'm going to want to crush your empire. And that's what it's time for. Um, so do you think Puffy was involved in the shooting? Only they can answer that question. Right. I have my own opinion, but I wouldn't slander their name like they did mine. Right. I wouldn't say things that I knew. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I believe so. I do believe so. I have proof things that I could say that would back up my claim, but this is not for the world to know about. You know what I mean? It's between me and him, and only he knows. So every time he say it ain't happy, you know, duh, 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 that's the only thing that makes this become an issue to everybody. Because I read, I, I, you seen what I said in the Vibe article. I basically bowed out and was going to go ahead about my life. The next issue, that, no, that wasn't even the next issue, because them cowards waited about four issues before they got their story together. Four issues later, half of New York is commenting on me getting shot. And before, they was all like, we didn't see nothing. In the first issue, read it, Vibe viewers. Nobody seen shit. The fourth issue, when they came back with a reply, everybody knew what I did. They knew what I said. I was acting. Who gets shot five times and acts? Oh, I didn't get shot five times in their vision. I only got shot once because they found the bullet. The police found it, but now they the cops. Now they doing detective work. They found the bullet. Oh, you found the bullet, huh? So what is this other shit in me then? What was the doctors talking about? What? Can you explain these other holes in me? How do I get gun powder all over me? That's what, if that insulted my intelligence. So yes, I did say Thug Life was dead. Yes, I bowed out, all of that. But when they said that, they breathed new life in me. Yeah. And Thug Life not only became a rap group, but it became a way of life for life for me. Because they, they disrespected me, my name, my family, what I had been through. They said that I couldn't be in pain. I could not feel, I could not be hurt. In my moment of pain, they was, when I was shot five times in jail for a crime I didn't commit, while every other black person, I mean whoever they was fucking babies in the ass or killing bitches and cutting them in 50 pieces, these niggas got support. Yeah. I go to jail for a crime. Everybody know I did not commit, get shot five times, and I'm getting raped in jail, woonty, wonty. They just say anything to assassinate my character. What that showed me, remember, remember this lack of a conscience when I come out. Remember this lack of mercy when I come out. Remember this lack of compassion when I come out. But now I come out, everybody want to calm down and relax and forget what you said. Do Donnie Simpson was on TV in front of bars like this going, who am I? Tupac. Uh -huh. But I'm wrong. You feel me? Niggas is hypocrites. You read why I gave my whole soul to you motherfuckers and said, yo, I'm through. I'm, I just want to chill. I just want to live life. And motherfuckers took shots from every direction. They thought that meant that I'm gay now. He had fucked me in the ass now. So, okay, you want to see some macho shit? I'm the most macho nigga out here. I'm the most, I thought you niggas knew. I'm the most thuggest nigga out here. I'm the whole, I have no motherfucking fear. I have no fear. I have only ambition and I want mine. And I will do anything to protect and feed my family. And these niggas represent a threat. Because I work too hard on this. And as far as hip-hop and all of that, I feel as though I'm not the god of hip-hop, but what we do on the West Coast, I sold five million in two months. Biggie album been out two years. He's barely touching two million. This nigga that had 50 remixes, a thousand. He got everybody in New York in his videos and still barely touching two million. I've been out two months. My shit sold five million with two videos out. I'm just starting. These niggas can't touch us. They can't. They can't really. It's funny. I think the new era of rap is like non-thug-like that's what they want to do. Okay. That's what they want to do because now everybody is shell shocked and they having trauma. We've been having traumatic nights always. I want to get away from it a lot. I tried to get away from it, but you can't. That's what they taught me. Right. The streets didn't teach me that thug life can never die. The world taught me that. I thought I could retire and move on. When I moved on to the so-called real world, the civilized world, these motherfuckers is worse than the niggas in the streets. They was telling them, I had little girls writing to me crying, saying you got raped in jail, I'm so sorry. That shit right there is what will fuel the anger that will never die. Yeah. Having a, I had to write letters to a thousand little kids explaining to them that I would be dead before a motherfucker would rape me, and you know that. So, as far as everybody, there is no mercy in my heart. You know what I mean? I'm not out here on no wild shit like I was before. Mm -hmm. This is not the same Tupac, believe me. I'm just very pissed off.
And don't think because you see me at an award show smiling or giving away an award or because I don't fight at this time, and I'm, that don't mean I ain't mad. I'm pissed off. And this ain't, don't tell me ain't nothing wrong and we should all be together and woo 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 because y'all niggas ain't getting no more money. You ain't getting no money because I made it that way. You have groups coming out, you produce Yeah, groups. the Outlaws. Oh, really? I murdered Thug Life uh -huh. and gave birth to the Outlaws. I murdered Thug Life. The niggas ain't act right. I murdered all of them as far as the music business. Right. <laughs> and I gave birth to the Outlaws. And they all blood relatives. Now I got a military, not mob like Italians, but mob like we've been mob orientated all our lives. Mm -hmm. Fuck that shit they be telling me about because everybody's saying because we choose to be organized now that we are emulating Italians and we should emulate Italians because they don't like us. Motherfuckers got it twisted. You know what I mean? Right. We got organization because we peak game. And it's not the mob really that we're seeing, it's really the government. They the biggest mob. That's who we study. Right, right. Governments. Just like me, they say this guy's Mr. Duplicity. He's always saying this good shit to the females and he say ho and this and that. See, that's where you're wrong. First you tell all the niggas, they tell him too short, but he never say nice shit. And they telling him he's a horrible person. I say one bad shit on one side, a good shit on the other side, and I'm Mr. Duplicity. <laughs> what does the world want? They have to sit their politically correct ass down and figure out what it is they want. Because they bullshit. <laughs> All the time. I'm really into books. They, they, I'm, I'm into the park. Right now, I'm into um, Mastering the Art of War, The Art of War. I just found all these new books. Um, um, Thoughts of a General, uh, How to Win the Argument Every Time, The Buying of a President. Um, uh, what's that book I got? The, the Russian Guy? Stalin. Stalin, I got that. Christopher Darden book. <laughs> uh, You'll Never Work Again in Hollywood, whatever that is when they talk about people that slept together. Reading that a lot of different things, but mostly shit on what built generals and what made countries and what what I want to read what Clinton read because he does the same shit I do, but don't you know get in trouble. <laughs> All his homeboys commit suicide. He get caught with his pants down in the bathroom, and this nigga is still the president. <laughs> I got women on you know marching outside my shows. This nigga is the fucking president. I'm 24. He's 40. What's his excuse? <laughs> Aside from the fame, the money, what, what do you think you can offer someone in a relationship? A woman in yeah. I believe that, I always discuss this, I feel like I'm one of the old fashioned type of guys. Yeah. Where as soon as I find me a woman that doesn't mind the fact that I want to be in charge, yeah. and that I believe that just like with the yin and yang, there's a masculine and mm -hmm. feminine, I believe in that in a relationship. I believe that most of our problems as black people and as period and as people in general is that we've forgotten our roles. The men have forgotten their roles as men, therefore the women have forgotten their roles. And that's where we get all this duplicity in love making and duplicity in sexuality, is because we've forgotten our roles and we're willing to settle for less. Not that they're not legitimate uh -huh. people who really do like this side, but a lot of it right now is just this niggas ain't shit. So I want some pussy. You know what I mean? And, <laughs> right. and the niggas just being like, you know, these black bitches ain't shit and whoop, or these white bitches ain't shit and whooping. For me, I can't do that. I, I can't turn my love off for a woman, no matter if they send me to jail and they talk shit and they really do piss me off. But I still can't love a man. I still love women. I still get excited when they come in the room and all that. So I feel as though what I can offer is my, my viewpoint, who I am, and my, my style, my lifestyle. And that I'm, I believe in my heart that I'm a man's man. I, I'm a man's man. I made myself. I, I'm, a, I'm a millionaire by my own hands, you know what I mean? I fight for myself. I did fight for myself. I'm a struggler, a striver. I take care of my family. I take everything that you want, I do. You know what I mean? It's just that I'm real. So I don't, I'm not politically correct, but I'm still a man's man. And I believe in family values. So what type of woman would it take A very, very, very strong woman. And one who was more in love with me than I was because I have to be more in love with her than she is. And that's what it is. Every time I fall in love with a woman, I don't fall in love with the woman she is. I fall in love with the woman that she could be. I never I haven't found a woman yet that fits up to my standards. And I'm sure I don't fit up to anybody's standards. But I haven't found one yet. But I've, I found ones that I think that have the potential to be the rawest woman in the world. You know what I mean? I feel like it's natural for a man, especially being black, to feel like he's a king and he's looking for his queen. And that's where I'm at right now. You can't be a king until you've made yourself, until you've done something. 
and I've accomplished my goals. My goals are set it out to make me a man. Now I feel like I'm a man now. I, I set out goals to make me a king. Now I'm not a king of anybody else but me. You know, nobody else is under my rule but me and my kids. You know what I mean? But I made myself into a king. Now I need a queen to be happy so that I can be a teacher and a father. I can't be that until I find a queen. So I'm stuck in the middle. Sure. Hey man, let bring my little homie home. He is not old enough to hang out with you. Come on. <laughs> I was home. No, yeah, no, I went to the gas station to wait for y'all. Y'all kept going. So then I went behind you and kept going behind you. When I came behind you, you already went to your house. But I came up to my house with you came. Huh? At your house. Oh. Oh, <laughs> you did. <laughs> you ain't see me turn You ain't see me turn around. Excuse me. Rick, sit my little homie on. Put him in the cab or something. Uh-uh, I'm doing that at 2 o'clock. All right. Yeah. Yeah. What? Mm. The um, interview? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Out here too, though. I think we're on 106. So, um, can you send a nigga on? <laughs> you want me to tell him that? I will tell him that. I'll put that in the interview. <laughs> so, can you sit them on? Huh? Come on, man. The batteries is running out. Cuz, man, we got some work to do. You know I got to go back to the movie set tomorrow. I don't got but today to work with they have. Yeah. I'm trying to rush the studio. So, can you handle that for me, please? All right. Stop bullshit, man. Put him in a cat. All right, I know you smoking on your key, but you didn't. Cash, bro. But sit a nigga home. Alright? Alright. Now nah, he don't know how to drive. Don't give him no car. Just put him in the cab. Let him drive. Put him in the cab, man. Fuck. Shit, shut up. This nigga yeah, crazy about getting drive. drive. <laughs> yeah. Come on, man. Bye. Credit. He's coughing all over the phone and shit. He trying to take move to Vegas. Nigga can't get no casinos. Nigga ain't what, what, 12? Sometimes he going to Vegas. Then I said, no, we going to swim it. That nigga can't swim. He got to do some homework. He got, like I said, nigga got homework. Send him on. Because fame will come and then move going to be gone. No, we got to play this I know. He got to come on now. Unless he take all y'all, that's how I'm one of them parents. You wanna take one of my kids out? Take all of them Vegas. Don't just take the cute little ones. <laughs> yeah, I'm working on one right now. Tim Raw and Tandy Newton called mm -hmm. Gridlock. Oh, when's it coming out? It should be out in January or February. We're doing a soundtrack too. Really? Yeah. You feel real positive about that? Very, very positive. It's great. It's gonna be something totally different. Hopefully, this will do something for you. You know what I mean? It's a shake. If, if, if nothing else, at best, it'll just prove I can show up on the set on time right. and still have an hour to sell five million and right. doing my shit. And still, thank you. And still be pushing this. Thank you. And still be doing that. It can show just that, that, we could, that I work hard, if right. nothing else, to right. show why I should not be in jail. Because in a little bit of time that I've been out, I'll make you things to show that I don't need to be in jail. Mm -hmm. you, know, you can still rehabilitate my ass yeah. right out here, you know, with everybody else. Because right. it's the money that rehabilitates me, not okay. the jail. Okay. What about father figures? Like, you don't hear much about it. You speak about your mother a lot, not about your father. Um, you have a relationship with him? Well, I thought my father was dead for all my life, really? except after I got shot, I looked up and there was this nigga that looked dead on me, and he was my father, so I found out. We still ain't taking no blood test, but I mean, a nigga look like me, mm -hmm. and then the other nigga is dead. So to me, it's like I'm past the father thing. You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. But I, I do want to know him, and I do know him. We right. do talk, and he did help me while I was locked down. He yeah. did come visit me, and it's all love. But 
I'm past that. Religion, what religion are you? I'm the religion that, to me, is the realest religion that is. I believe in God. Mm -hmm. I try to pray to God every night as I pass out. Right. And I think that's, and, I, and to me, religion, my idea of religion is this. I think that if you, I, got, I learned this in jail, because I, I talked to every God there was right. in jail. I think that if you take one, one of the O's out of good, it's God. If you had a D to evil, it's the devil. I think yeah. some cool motherfucker sat down a long time ago and said, let's figure out a way that we can control motherfuckers. And that's what they came up with, is the Bible. Because if the guy wrote the Bible, I'm sure it would have been a revised copy by now. You know what I mean? Because a lot of shit has changed. And I've been looking for this revised copy, and I don't see it. I still see that same old copy that they had from then. And I'm not disrespecting anybody's religion. Please forgive me if it comes off like that. I'm just stating my opinion. I feel like we get crucified. I mean, the Bible was telling us all these people did this because they suffered this much. That's what makes them special people. Right. I got shot five times. One, two, three, four, five. You know what I mean? I, I, and I got crucified to the media. You know what I mean? And I walked through with the thorns on. And I had shit thrown on me. And I had to, this the thief at the top. I told that nigga I'd be back for you. You know what I mean? And trust me, this not supposed to be going down. I'll be back. So I'm not saying I'm Jesus, but I'm saying that we go through that type of thing every day. We don't part the Red Sea, but we walk through the hood without getting hit, without getting shot. You know what I mean? We don't turn water to wine, but we turn motherfucking dope dope fiends and dope heads into profitable, um, productive citizens into society. You know what I mean? We don't do we don't we know we turn money, we turn words into money. You know what I mean? What what greater gift can that be? So I believe God blesses us. I believe God blesses those that hustle, those that use their mind, and those that overall are righteous. I believe that your karma, everything that you do bad comes back to you. So anything that I'm doing that's bad, I'm going to have to suffer for. But in my heart, I think what I'm doing is right. You know what I mean? So I feel like I'm going to heaven. You know what I mean? And I think heaven is just when you sleep, you sleep with a good conscience. You don't have nightmares. And hell is when you sleep, the last thing you see is all the fucked up things you did in your life. And you just see it over and over again. Because you don't burn. Because if, if that's the case, it's hell on earth. Because bullets burn. You know what I mean? It's people that got burned in fires. That means they went to hell already. You know what I mean? All that is here. So what, what else? What do you got there that we ain't seen here? What, you gonna walk around aimlessly, zombie? Nigga, that's here. You ain't been on the streets lately. You know what I mean? What, what heaven is now. Look, we sitting up here in the big screen. It's heaven for the moment. You know what I mean? Hell is jail. I seen that one. Trust me, this is, this is what's real. And all that other shit is to control you. If the churches took half the money that they was making and gave it back to the community, we'd be all right. And they take half the buildings that they use to praise God and gave it to motherfuckers who need God, we be all right. We be all right. Have you seen some of these goddamn churches lately? It's ones that take up the whole block in New York. It's homeless people out here. Why ain't God letting them stay there? Why these niggas got gold ceilings and shit? Why God need gold ceilings to talk to me? Why do God need colored windows to talk to me? Why God can't come where I'm at, where he sent me? If God wanted to talk to me in a pretty spot like that, why the hell he sent me here then? You know what I mean? That, that make ghetto kids not believe in God. Why? So that's a wrong religion. I believe in God. I believe God put us wherever we want to be at. Then it makes sense that God would put us in the ghetto. That means he wants us to work hard to get up out of here. That means he's testing us even more. That makes sense. It makes sense that if you're good in your heart, then you you closer to God. But if you're evil, then you're close to the devil. That makes sense. I see that every day. All that other spooky shit don't make sense. And I don't even believe, I'm not dissing them, but I don't believe in the brothers. I was in jail with them and having conversations. Brothers, I'm God, I'm God. If you God, open the gate for me. Yeah. You know how far the sun is and how far the moon is? How the hell do I pop this fucking gate and get me free up out of here? Then I'll be a five percent of full life. Well, never seen it.